The Kimball City Council approved the rehabilitation plans of the wastewater treatment plant in the May 15th meeting. The wastewater treatment plant that sits on the east side of town needs extensive upgrading and renovations throughout the plant. The next step is to submit the plans to the Nebraska Department of Environment and Energy to be reviewed. The construction is expected to begin next summer around April and last through October. At the point in construction that the waste needs to be redirected, there are state licensed lagoons next to the plant that the workers will install pipes to for the purpose of bypassing the plant. The lagoons can hold up to 160 days worth of waste. The portion of construction that will require the waste to be redirected to the lagoons will not reach that limit. The City Council unanimously voted to upgrade the city park with the recently purchased playground equipment. The City of Kimball recently purchased a new playground with the intent on replacing the Gaudi Park equipment. After feedback from city employees, Mayor John Morrison decided to bring it back up for discussion in the May 15th City Council meeting. After much debate about which park is in greater need of an upgrade, the consensus fell with the city park. It is more outdated with the old metal-style equipment and is a better location for the specific playground that the city purchased. City Council member Craig Pike first pointed out that Gaudi Park is higher traffic so it would be the more popular choice for an upgrade. City Council member Christy Warner counters that the reason Gaudi Park is more popular is because it has nicer equipment. Ann Garner also recommended City Park because Gaudi Park has had more recent upgrades than City Park. However, community member Don Lonsdale said he would rather see Gaudi Park be upgraded because that is where all the other activities are located such as the pool, the fairgrounds and the pickleball courts. We need to do repairs to Gaudi Park, there's no question about it, Morrison said. But the equipment over at City Park is pretty sad. City Administrator Annette Brower says the new equipment is a DIA approved and sensory safe, so it is suitable for handicapped children or those who are sensory sensitive. As much as Gaudi Park is known as the hub park, she says when thinking about the best location for a playground suitable for sensory needs and handicapped the city park makes more sense. Warner says by upgrading the city park, parents who have children who struggle with sensory overload will have a park to bring their children to. Because it is less frequented, it will have less people, less activities going on, less screaming at the pool, and less noise from the fairgrounds. The layout of the city park pairs well with the purpose of this playground as it already has a paved drive-up area by the basketball courts and bathrooms. Construction will need to include extending a short sidewalk from the west side to the play area as well as extending the sidewalk from the play area to the restrooms so it all connects. The playground includes equipment for ages 2 to 5 and other areas are geared toward 5 to 12 year olds however, it was mentioned that it seems catered more toward younger kids. City Council member Gabe Ingram says the city park could be a safer environment for younger kids to play because it is in a more controlled environment. It has extensive green space surrounding the playground area and it doesn't have the gravel roadway going around the park like Gaudi Park has. There was a worry about a gas line running underneath Gaudi Park that would inhibit an upgrade but it is not a concern. The gas line was there before the current equipment was installed, and it didn't stop that installation. Brower says the council could budget in a park upgrade for Gaudi Park as early as next year once they are eligible for another grant. On Wednesday, May 15, 2024, the Kimball County Sheriff's Office conducted a traffic stop that resulted in the arrest of Henrikas Martinkus, 26, and Charles Sheldon, 47, for possession of a controlled substance. The Kimball Police Department assisted in the arrest of the two suspects. All subjects are presumed innocent until proven guilty. The Kimball High School boys golf team qualified for the state tournament next week. At the district competition May 13, the team scored 372. Two of the students placed individually, Kyler Lux won first place and Landon Norberg won fifth place. The state tournament is May 21 and 22 in North Platte. The primary election voting closed at 7 p.m. Tuesday evening, and the results are in. The Kimball County Commissioner moving on to the general election is Republican David R. Hoddell with 218 votes. Incumbent Carl Stander received 197 votes, Matt Bright received 146, and Sarah Weisbrook received 95. The presidential nominees from Kimball and Banner counties are Republican Donald Trump and Democrat President Joe Biden. Trump received 559 votes from Kimball and 93 votes from Banner. Biden received 31 votes from Kimball and 4 votes from Banner. 
Republican Nikki Haley received 79 votes from Kim Ball and 13 votes from Banner. Republican Perry Johnson received 10 votes from Kim Ball and 1 vote from Banner. Democrat Dean Phillips received 8 votes from Kim Ball and 0 from Banner. The nominees for Representative in Congress District 3 from Kim Ball and Banner counties are Republican incumbent Adrian Smith and Democrat Daniel Ebers. Smith received 535 votes from Kim Ball and 81 votes from Banner. Ebers received 24 votes from Kim Ball and 2 votes from Banner. Republican John Waltz received 65 votes from Kim Ball and 18 from Banner. Republican Robert McQuiston received 53 votes from Kim Ball and 10 votes from Banner. Democrat David Else received one vote from both Kimball and Banner counties. The six-year term U.S. Senator nominee from Kimball and Banner counties is Republican incumbent Deb Fisher who received 528 votes from Kimball and 85 votes from Banner. Republican Aaron Kowalski received 123 votes from Kimball and 23 votes from Banner. The two-year term U.S. Senator Republican nominee Pete Ricketts will face Democrat Preston Love Jr. in the general election. Ricketts received 539 votes from Kimball and 90 votes from Banner. Love received 40 votes from Kimball and 3 votes from Banner. Republican John Glenn Weaver received 69 votes from Kimball and 13 votes from Banner. Republican Max Stevens received 46 votes from Kimball and 7 votes from Banner. Members of the State Highway Commission met at the Jaring Civic Center Friday for their monthly meeting and an update on the roads program for District 5. During the public comment period, the majority of those speaking discussed the need to address Highway 71 south of Kimball to the Colorado border. Kimball County Board Chair Rich Flores was one of them, saying the first five miles south of Interstate 80 are especially important. With the expansion of Clean Harbors doubling their operation and more than doubling their workforce, we will see a greater amount of traffic than ever before. The interest of this facility will see a huge increase of traffic which creates a big safety concern. We also will soon see the Air Force activity in the area revamping the ICBM missile system with the Sentinel missile system. The activity is expected to last many years, and of course with that comes transportation challenges, Flora said. Regarding the L-62 expansion project from Minotaur to Highway 385, District 5 engineer Doug Hoevitt said the NEPA review is nearly complete. Hoevitt said said a public hearing will take place toward the end of the year on the proposed configuration of adding two more lanes either north or south of the existing roadway. State N. Steve Erdman of Bayard tell commissioners that the state's decision on where the new lanes of L-62 will be located needs to be disclosed sooner rather than later because at this point there are a lot of property owners in limbo on the issue himself included. However, he also said there may be higher roadway priorities in the panhandle. I may have said that in just about taking the money from L-62 and putting it south of Kimball, but I'm serious about that. That project south of Kimball needs to be done, said Erdman whose district included Kimball County prior to legislative redistricting after the 2020 census. Clean Harbors is an outstanding company, and I can tell you that when they increase the truck traffic to get in there it's going to be far more dangerous. I believe the need is probably greater there than it is by my place. Paul Whiting, who is overseeing the Clean Harbors Kimball facility expansion, told Commissioners and Department of Transportation Director Vicki Kramer that once completed, the expanded plant that operates 24-7 will see truck traffic increase to a projected 260 trailer loads of material a week. The plant will soon become among the largest and busiest of the company's facilities throughout the U.S. That is all in local news. At Kimball State Bank and Kimball Insurance, products we offer are home, auto, business, truck, farm, life, boat, RV, motorcycle, ATV, rental homes, vacant homes, and SR-22 auto policies. Hours of operation are Monday through Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Fridays 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturdays by appointment and closed on Sundays. We are conveniently located at 205 South Locust Street, four blocks west of the stoplights off Highway 30. For more than a century, Kimball State Bank and Insurance has been serving our community and will continue for more years to come. Call us at 308-235-4629 for more information or stop by 205 South Locust Street. Device rescue services are now available in Kimball. These following services are now available with device rescue services. Diagnostics on PC, mobile and console. Full suite of anti-malware tools and updated drivers. 
designed and built custom computers in all price ranges. Virus and malware removal for PC, Mac and mobile. Upgrades, repairs and refurbishes. Drop off, mail or travel and millage. Appliances and consoles. Desktops and laptops. Windows and Linux. And Android slash iPhones. He has a contact card and his contact info is Michelle NCGHD and his cell phone number is 307-316-2253. Hours are Monday through Friday from 12 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can also email him at Michelle MCGHGHY93 at Outlook.com. His address is P.O. Box 399, Kimball, Nebraska 69145. Looking for antiques, used clothing, appliances, furniture, backpacks, tool sets, and other tools, cookware, purses, wallets, ladders, desks, older technology, and more. Come to Odin Antiques. Your hometown garage sale and thrift store that is open on weekends and shut down during the week, all year round. With new arrivals weekly, they are open on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Carrie would like you to stop by and check them out weekly every weekend. Odin Antiques is located one block west of the stoplights in downtown Kimball across from Pizza Hut off West Highway 30. Anderson Crude Trans Incorporated. For auto glass hoi truck and trailer needs. A T Incorporated in Kimball, Nebraska. Anderson Crude Transportation at 1520, 5 East 5th Street in Kimball, is open to the public for all your auto glass needs, including truck and farm equipment. The OCT shop also offers service and repairs for all your heavy truck and trailer needs, such as a C work, brakes, wheel cells, and any other minor repairs. You can call the following numbers for their services. Call Jeff at 9703023543, Kyle at 3076307954 or Kenny at 3082355728. Double Diamond Farms in Kimball, Dix, and Bushnell, Nebraska have hay for sale. Grass slash alfalfa mix. Oats slash alfalfa mix. Beardless forage wheat. Golden German hay millet. Pearl millet. Sweet leaf sorghum. Oat slash beardless forage wheat mix. And alfalfa. All 4 by 4 squares. Feed test is available. Freight options are available. The hay is for sale. Call 970-466-2979. The Kimball Public Library is looking for donations of plastic jars. They need to be 16 to 40 ounces. Or similar size. Clear plastic with lid and clean. We will be taking donations until we reach 120 jars. We are celebrating Beef Month at your local Main Street Market store in Scottsbluff, Torrington, and Kimball. In our meat department, USDA Choice Boneless Beef Ribeye Steak at $12.99 a pound. Choice Boneless Beef Shoulder Roast at $4.99 a pound. And Nathan's Famous Beef Franks 12 to 14 ounces, $4.99. Use your co-op cash card to earn and redeem points for cash off your purchase. Our weekly ad is online and in our stores at Main Street Market in Scottsbluff, Torrington, and Kimball. Proud to serve families, farms, and food. Low-cost wellness screenings are taking place at Kimball Health Services at their new address. 255 West 4th Street in Kimball, Nebraska. Enter through South Doors. Friday and Saturday, May 17th and May 18th from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. The low-cost wellness screenings are sponsored by Kimball Health Services and WHF Wyoming Health Fair will hitch them 40 years of helping you help yourself. A DEXA bone density scan will be available for only $50. Also, there will be a Kimball County Sheriff's Office drug take back. Turn in your expired or unused prescriptions. Dead Man Saloon is coming up in downtown Kimball. Join us for our annual Murder Mystery Theater hosted by the Friends of the Kimball Library. Saturday, May 18, 2024. Have a luncheon at 2 p.m. at the KCTS building. Cost is $20 per ticket or supper at 6 p.m. at the Eagles. Cost for that is $30 per ticket. Sponsored by Friends of the Kimball Library and Kimball Public Library. Call 308-235-4523 or stop by with any questions. Adventure begins at your library. Come to Kimball Public Library for summer reading adventures. Kindergarten through 6th grade, come see a magician, make a lantern, watch a play, and more. 
Teens International Snacks Taste Testing, Geocaching, Laser Cut Art and Crafts, and more. Sign up begins May 13. Adults, stop in and pick up a book bingo sheet. For more information call us at 3082354523. Annual pool party is for all ages. Preschool Storytime African Safari, Ocean Exploration, A Rainforest Adventure, and more. This is all going on this summer at the Kimball Public Library located at 208 South Walnut Street. The 15th Annual Kimball Ranch Rodeo is coming up on Saturday, June 1st at 5.30 p.m. at the Kimball County Fairgrounds. The Kimball Ranch Rodeo 15 Annual Team and Ranch Bronc entries are open. June 1, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. at the Kimball Banner County Fairgrounds. Team entries are available with 10 slots open. Teams are made up of four contestants with one alternate. Entry fee is $500 per team. Team events include rope and doctoring, trailer loading, team tying, and wild cow milking. Ranch Bronc entries are also available with 20 slots open. $150 entry fee is due by May 27. There will be $1,000 of added money. WSRR sanctioned event. Payments are available to Venmo at Kimball Ranch Rodeo. Again, that's the 15th Annual Kimball Ranch Rodeo Saturday, June 1st at 5.30 p.m. at the fairgrounds. A red and white golf classic is coming up on Saturday, June 8, 2024 with a 10 a.m. start at Four Winds Golf Course. Cost is $300 per team. A cart is not included. Register now. Also on Saturday, June 8, 2024. 6 p.m. will be social hour followed by dinner at 7 p.m. at the Sagebrush. Cost is $50 for a meal and $20 for bottomless mug. It's the banquet and silent option. Proceeds benefit Kimball High School activities. Questions? Contact Red and White at kpslonghorns.org. From the KIMB Weather Center, this is your weather outlook for the next week. Tonight, a 20% chance of showers before 9 p.m. Mostly cloudy, then gradually becoming clear with a low around 45. West wind around 15 miles per hour becoming north-northwest after midnight. Saturday sunny, with a high near 76. North-northwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour becoming south in the afternoon. Saturday night, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly cloudy, with a low around 49. Breezy, with a south wind 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 40%. Sunday a chance of rain before noon, then a chance of showers and thunderstorms after noon. Mostly sunny, with a high near 81. South wind 10 to 15 miles per hour becoming west in the afternoon. Chance of precipitation is 30%. Sunday night a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms before midnight. Partly cloudy, with a low around 43. North-northwest wind around 10 miles per hour. Monday showers likely and possibly a thunderstorm afternoon. Mostly sunny, with a high near 68. Chance of precipitation is 60%. Monday night, showers and possibly a thunderstorm. Low around 40. Chance of precipitation is 90%. Tuesday, a chance of rain, then showers likely and possibly a thunderstorm afternoon. Mostly cloudy, with a high near 55. Tuesday night, showers likely and possibly a thunderstorm before midnight, then a chance of rain after midnight. Mostly cloudy, with a low around 37. Next Wednesday, a slight chance of rain, then a chance of showers and thunderstorms after noon. Mostly sunny, with a high near 65. Next Wednesday night, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. Partly cloudy, with a low around 40. Next Thursday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly sunny, with a high near 70. Next Thursday night a chance of rain. Mostly cloudy, with a low around 40. And next Friday, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly sunny, with a high near 69. That is your weather outlook for the next week.